Nelson Mandela a happy birthday, best wishes. Uh, I know we love him. Uh, we want to let him know that people all over the world love him, especially Africans. Uh, we, we appreciate all his sacrifice for independence struggle, for freedom and justice all over the world. A few words that speak for millions. Nelson Mandela, former activist, former prisoner and former president. A man who has touched many lives. Guys, earlier this year we asked you, the Yo! TV viewers, who your favorite grown-up in the whole world is. And you all answered the same thing. Our wonderful previous president, Mr. Nelson Mandela. This was the 31st of December 1999. On the eve of the new century, Nelson Mandela was declared the man of the millennium by a children's TV program. Characteristically, he gave up his time to appear on the program. The oldest man in the studio was also the coolest man in the studio. Well, in the countryside, where I grew up, the most important game at the time was stick play. <laughs> and uh, a champion in stick play was like a world uh, heavyweight boxing champion. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. I remember the preparation for the day. Everyone was so excited because, you know, um, it, it was just out the Madiba, you know, he was coming into studio, he was coming to meet us, and my mom even made sure that I got my hair did and everything, you know, and it was such a surreal moment. You know, you've always, we always read about Mandela and we always um, learned about him at school and saw him on TV, but I never really thought that I was going to meet the man in real life. And he came into studio and he was the, just the most amazing, most humble, grandfather is the best way I can put it and he just hugged all of us and he was like so nice to meet you you're doing such a great job as kids and my heart just went squish. <laughs> Shade Giliberti was just 14 when she met Madiba. Ten years on she is still a TV presenter and like most people have met him she was inspired. He's phenomenal he's absolutely phenomenal on so many levels of phenomena. He um, I say, like I said, grandfather. He really is the grandfather of South Africa, you know, of, of Africa, even of the world. He's just, he's, he's so humble and everything that he says is so truthful and he just speaks from the heart and he, he's so knowledgeable as well. And just being in his presence was like being in the presence of a demigod almost. Ten years into this century, the name Mandela echoed around the streets of South Africa during the 2010 World Cup. The man who lobbied to bring the cup to Africa. I think Mandela is a good example for us, okay? Good man, good man. If it's not for this man, a lot of these things would have, wouldn't have been possible. So again, he must have a wonderful birthday and thanks for what he's done for our country so far. I think as Mandela is like a father to Africans. One thing I admire about him is his forgiveness and I wish him the best. People of all creeds and colours mixed in Johannesburg in a way that would have been unthinkable decades ago. One towering figure bestrode it all. This is Nelson Mandela Square in Santa near Johannesburg. Now people from all over the world flock to this square and when they come here they all want to take home a memory of, well, you know who. Among the people paying their respects are many from across Africa, including Kenyan financial analyst and CNBC Africa pundit Ali Khan Saktu. He changed things, but the real change is happening right now. His, his legacy is being put into practice, and it's quite ironic because, you know, the World Cup was never considered trickle-down economics. It never really brought a, a, an economic benefit to people as such but it's bringing you a very, very big benefit and one that's very difficult to measure, both in terms of business, but also, I think, in terms of psychology. There is a sense, I think, you've given everybody across the continent that we can do anything. It is the fruit of a remarkable life that saw the son of a chief in South Africa's rural Eastern Cape become a lawyer and political activist in Johannesburg. At this former farm called Lily's Leaf in Rivonia in Johannesburg, Nelson Mandela pretended to be a gardener as he carried out undercover work for the liberation movement. His love for people, his love for freedom, his love for the liberation of this country so that everybody should be equal, everybody should have equal opportunities and uh, peace. Those were his qualities. He was arrested in 1962 and put on trial for his life here at the Palace of Justice in Pretoria. Oliver Tambo once told me 
Nelson loves a fight. We used to send him out to go and wag his finger at them. Nelson also believes, and I asked him quite a few months ago now, why did the judge not hang us? Oh, he said, because I dared him to, and he did not dare. A life sentence and 27 years on Robin Island followed when Nelson Mandela emerged from prison with a philosophy of reconciliation and reconstruction, he looked to business for support for his new rainbow nation. Under his guidance, everything from the Johannesburg Stock Exchange to South African breweries grew into world players. Uh, everybody wanted to come in. Everybody wanted a piece uh, of South Africa. It was, you know, when we spoke about the rainbow nation, I think it was a rainbow country. It was a country, uh, you know, when the pot of gold was here. Uh, that was the honeymoon period. Unfortunately, we've allowed things to slip quite a lot. But I think everybody wanted to come in. We saw a number of the companies that had gone in the 80s, uh, from 85 onwards, started to come back. IBMs, the banks, you know, everybody started to trek backwards uh, into South Africa and re-establish the base here. Of course, we couldn't get the brand names. You know, we couldn't get anything from Boss to Prada to, to uh, you know, any of those any of those brand names. Now they all came back. And if you walk through Sandton City and you look at the number of shops that are represented here, you know, international brands, none of that was available at that stage. Nobody wanted to be associated. None of the big brands wanted to be associated with South Africa simply because of what it would cost them in publicity on the other side. Ten years on, these children have now grown to be adults. Like millions around the world, their lives are likely to be enriched by being touched by a man as towering as he is humble.